So I just spent my first night in the van. It did not go smoothly. I first parked kind of near where I'd hiked yesterday. I just found a place and pulled over. I've car camped there before. I thought it would be safe. But around midnight, park rangers came by, gave me a tap, told me I had to move. So half dead, uh, completely tired, 21 miles of hiking later and having woke up at two o'clock that morning because I wanted to shoot the sunrise. I drove a half hour to a different place where I've car camped before, which turned out to be safe, it turned out to be all right. I should have just come here first. Being asked to move in the middle of the night left me tired and cranky, not gonna lie. But the weather in the White Mountains soon turned to rainy and overcast, which cheered me right back up. What can I say? I'm a weird dude. I decided to visit one of my favorite geological features in New England, which was right down the road. I'm at the Flume Gorge, which is a deep ravine in Franconia Valley. It was discovered in 1803 by someone who's just in the woods looking for a fishing hole. It's a dramatic ravine. It's kind of like the Oneana Gorge in Oregon. Except they built a boardwalk here that you can kind of walk through, which ruins it for photography, but it's very cool to walk through it. Thought I'd check it out again today. Haven't been here in a few years. Before entering the gorge, you go through this covered bridge which was built in 1886. There are covered bridges like this all over the place here. And basically they were covered to keep snow off the bridge. It's really that simple. You can see as we enter the gorge, it's quite dramatic. The rock walls are maybe 40, 50 feet tall. I used to come here to do photography and take photos all the time, but of course you get the boardwalk and all of your shots, which I think kind of ruins it. Today I'm just gonna take video and honestly, it, it's a lot easier. This spot looking right up the gorge is without a doubt my favorite part of the gorge. It's, it's the money shot. The problem is waiting for hordes of people to pass. You just come here on a weird day, don't come on a weekend, and have patience. I'm at the top of the gorge. That is so much fun to crawl through, hike through, whatever you want to call it. And of course you have a big waterfall right at the top. It's called Avalanche Falls. And when you, you get to the top of the gorge, you encounter this rather impressive, large boulder cave. I believe it's called Bear Cave. That might be backwards, I'm not sure. You can crawl through it. I've done it before. You can kind of see some light at the other end, but it's so wet and miserable right now. I'm gonna spare you guys the ugliness of that. I would say if you are gonna come to the gorge, the best time to do it is right after a waterfall when the light is all overcast and everything is just lush and green. The water is flowing especially loud. Might be too loud for you to hear me, but oh yeah, this is perfect weather conditions right now. There is a little viewpoint at the top of the gorge. You can look down to a degree with some elevation. It's mostly obstructed by the trees, but still worth going down this little side path. You get what you will from this impressive little geological feature in the White Mountains. There's another viewpoint at the top of the Flume Trail. I don't actually remember ever stopping at this one before, but Let's check it out. Another reason I think this place is easily worth the $18 admission. After the Flume Gorge, after you exit, you come across a second gorge, Liberty Gorge, which crosses over Liberty Brook. And you go through this, this uh, covered bridge right here. And it's a really impressive gorge. I'll get there in a second. It's in some ways more dramatic than the flume. It's certainly higher walls, but as you can take a look, the trail continues up the edge. You don't get go down in it. It's just another great photo op. This is another fun spot. 
little boulder cave that you can crawl through to the other end. I won't do it today because it's so wet and muddy. The Flume Gorge was formed 200 million years ago during the Jurassic era, when these mountains were as tall as the Rockies. Today they offer a great way to spend a rainy day, and since I had time left, I decided to hit one of the cemeteries in town as well. I'm at Maple Street Cemetery in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Earliest gravestones here seem to be the 1850s, so by New England standards, I think this is one of the newer cemeteries. It's beautiful though. It's kind of on a hillside. There's only one road that accesses it. Um, you can drive right by it. That's what I did. It's kind of in a valley between the White Mountains. Yeah, I was going to do some hiking today, but it's raining. It's kind of a light drizzle rain. And I just don't feel like getting wet all day. I was up on the Franconia Ridge last night and got caught in a thunderstorm. And the trail I took took three hours to get down and I was absolutely soaked and miserable by the time I got to the bottom. So I think today I'm just gonna walk around and explore some cemeteries in the rain. You know, I love doing that anyway, so. And this is a nice place to start. The cemetery has a little bit of everything, including one and only one mausoleum here. I'm assuming that's what it is, but I can't find any markings on it whatsoever. If it's some sort of service facility, you gotta say it, it blends in really well. This is a rather interesting gravestone here. I can't tell if it's a person or some other memorial marking. It, it only has four initials at the top, I-O-O-F. And it has this rather curious flag here. Maple Memoriam, I-O-O-F. Yeah, I can't tell if it's a person or Native American, maybe? I really don't understand. Interesting, though. Now, this tombstone obviously stands out. McPherson is my last name, but they don't have the S in this. Makes me wonder if it was a, a misspelling or maybe some ancestor down the line just dropped the S. Either accidentally on purpose and it just kind of stuck with that with all subsequent gen generations. I've seen things like that before. Right on the edge of the cemetery, there's a steep ravine and a brook flowing down there. I know I've said before, I love the sound of running water. It's just so peaceful. And you add that to a cemetery. Yeah, this is almost the perfect cemetery in my opinion. I've got the brook with running water right here. Beautiful landscaping, a little bit of everything. I'm in love with this place. In a previous life, I would have interpreted being asked to move my car in the middle of the night as a terrible omen and I would have ruminated on it endlessly. But I'm not doing that today. I feel different. I see it as a worthy lesson to learn early on, my first weekend trip with a van no less. It tells me that this van is not a car. It stands out and I need to be extra careful, which is why I'm driving back to Boston tonight. There, I know of some places where I can sleep without interruption. As ironic as it seems, the city might just be the best place for van life after all. <laughs>